Good morning, students. So let us uh, start with the new chapter, chapter six, information processing. So under this information processing, we are going to see two things. One is called scheduling, and the other one is called flowchart. Scheduling, and the second uh, concept we are going to study is about flowchart. So scheduling, you all know what do you mean by scheduling, is it not? Okay. So here, this uh, scheduling is dependent wholly on some particular task. Okay, task or events, I can say. So this task or events is being given under certain constraints. Constraints is nothing but conditions. Okay, students. So now I go with the definition of scheduling. So it consists of activities to take place. It consists of activities to take place. Secondly, we are going to order those particular tasks or activities. And the third one, what we are going to do is, we are going to allocate some resources. So these are the things we are going to do under this uh, concept, uh, scheduling. Okay, so to understand in a better way, let me e explain the scheduling with an example. So all of you uh, in your book, take page 112. Okay, so there is an example given there. So there is a situation given there for you. So here we will see. So there is a program list. So here they have given a program list of two days zonal level sports meet held on 15th November 2018 and 16th November 2018 at Bala School. So there is a school and two days they are going to conduct a zonal level sports meet. So whatever activities they have, finally they will be submitting an annual report. Okay. So for that annual report, they have to prepare a schedule and make a table. So they have given some headings like this, column headings, having serial number, date of events, time of events, name of events, collection, etc. And the program list is also being given and the timing is given. So on each day, what are the programs to be happened at what time? Okay. So these are the things they have given. Secondly, for the second day also they have given the timings and the program. Okay. So now, and these are all the photographs available. So now I'm going to prepare a schedule list like this using the column headings that are given in the problem. So in the beginning you put the heading as uh, zonal level sports meet and under that we have the two days date you put and the column heading you write and below that and the first serial number on the day one, okay, day one that is on 15th, what they have given on day one at 8 a.m. what they must do preparation of playground. Secondly, at 9 a.m., there is an inauguration, okay. So now here you can see, so at 8 a.m., what is happening? Preparation of playground and the corresponding photograph has been stuck here. Similarly, for uh, the time 9 a.m., there is the inauguration that is start of the event. Likewise, using the events here and the photograph here, everything. So this is how a schedule list is being prepared. Can you see? So one by one, they have noting it down, they are preparing, okay, so now, so the day 1 over here, so now coming to day 2, 16, so 10.30 a.m., the team event starts, okay, so here they have given an indoor games, so indoor games is nothing but, you all know, carom board, chess like, so team events is uh, kabaddi, basketball like, so individual e events will be running, high jump, etc. Finally, at the end of the day, 4.30, what they have given? A price distribution for all the games. Now closing ceremony, you can see, they close the sports meet. Finally, they end up the session with the national anthem. Likewise, so this is how I prepare a schedule list for any task or activity being given. Okay. So looking into this uh, schedule list, it will be quite easy for us to make a note. So at this time, this date, this particular activity is happening. So because of that, we are preparing this schedule list. Okay, students, hope you understood this particular example. So keeping this example in mind, I'll be giving some problems as a homework, you do it, okay. So under that, the first activity is given. So you can uh, solve this particular thing in your book itself. So you can see here, so there is a table given for you, there is a trip schedule. Trip so now, so this is the activity given for you. So this you are going to prepare a schedule for an uh, trip schedule. Trip is nothing but the ex excursion, okay. So you people uh, in the school, they will be taking you for excursion, is it not? So before that, they will be asking the permission letter from your parents. So this is what the 
the schedule is you have to prepare on your own okay so this is the first homework pro problem for you so this is the first homework problem for you so now coming to the next turn over in the next page so this is the second activity so i'll explain this activity i will do for you one row the remaining things you complete so this would be your second problem okay so now so here there is a schedule given for the game of kabaddi so two things are given so kindly note so this is the okay allocation here and this is the instruction so use this both to fill up this particular schedule table okay so here you can see since it is a game right kabaddi team so we have quarter final semi finals finals etc okay so now coming to this table the first row what is the match name given here quarter finals so here we have the quarter finals 1 2 etc so now coming to the date so here it is left blank isn't it what will be the date here so under quarter finals 1 so this is quarter finals 1 this is 2 3 and 4 and this is semi finals 1 2 and this is finally your finals so here under this what the date is given 5 8 2018 and uh, 19 sorry 19 so this date you take here and write okay 5 8 2019 so similarly what is the participating teams so the participating teams under this is b and e so therefore you write b and e and venue of the match venue means is nothing but the place where the match is going to happen so here what is given can you see here court 1 so you take down and write as court 1 so similarly by seeing these instructions and information you fix up this particular schedule list so this is your second problem for your homework okay so now coming to the next one so again this is the third one for you so th all the things you can do it in your book itself okay so homework 3 so here there is a time table given so till now we teachers will be giving you time table right so it is now on your part to fill this particular time table according to this table and this instructions okay one thing i will let you know i'll teach you how to do the remaining things you can do so here in first point what is the subject here tamil the period allotment is 7 okay so here you can count and see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and seven okay so what 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 only six periods is given for you here how much is given totally seven so one more tamil period you have to allot so so many gaps are he here and there okay can you see so when you fix it you see to that all for all the subjects some comes in the morning and some subjects comes in the afternoon so equal distribution you must do equal distribution of the periods okay in the morning and in the afternoon see to that everything is being given as an equal distribution okay so these are the periods allotted again i repeat and these are the instructions given both combined together to form this particular time table okay so this will, will be your third this will be your third problem okay, okay students so till now we have uh, seen about this uh, scheduling so now we'll continue with the, the next topic flow chart okay so before going into the flow chart so in our day to day life okay so we are bound with so many problems so we are bound with so many problems and the problems has to be solved then and there is it not okay so day to day activities such as like purchasing things making payments everything whatever activity we do in our uh, daily life we have some uh, uh, kind of problem and that problem has to be solved okay so any problem given so now coming to this uh, thing flow chart so any problem given so before solving the problem so i have to uh, make a certain representation so if i make a particular problem a certain representation in this concept we are going to use a flow chart so using this flow chart you can easily finally solve the problem so seeing the flow chart the problem can be identified properly and the solution we can got sorry we can get at the end so now coming to this uh, flow chart so there are i told you it is a representation isn't it so it is a 
pictorial representation flow chart is nothing but a pictorial representation okay so now uh, for a pictorial representation there are some symbols being used symbols or shapes being used here you can see here 1 2 3 4 and 5 only five symbols are being used in this particular flow chart so using this five symbols we are going to um, sort out our problems so under this symbol the first symbol here can you see there is an arrow mark here there is a line drawn like this so it is called a flow line and this flow line is used to connect the shapes we are going to use this shapes is it not so to connect from one shape to the other shape we are going to use the flow line so the second one so this particular shape it is not it is not a rectangle neither or an oval like okay so this particular shape is called terminal right it's called a terminal and this shape is used to represent the end and the start of a particular task so task is nothing but an activity right so this symbol when i use it represents either the start or the stop of the activity now coming to the third symbol so can you identify what is this shape here so this is nothing but a parallelogram shape okay so this parallelogram shape when i use so this represents my input and then output so this particular symbol we are going to use in a input and an output okay so as you go into the example you will clearly understand more okay so now you just you make a uh, attention to this particular symbol so coming to this fourth one this symbol is a rectangle shape so this is used for processing this processing is nothing but a calculation purpose for calculating everything we use this particular symbol so coming to this last shape can you see what is this shape this is a diamond shape this diamond shape is used for making decisions okay this is my uh, for comparison like decision is nothing but comparison this or that yes or no like okay true or false for this particular thing we are going to use this particular diamond shape for decision making so these are all the five shapes okay so now coming to the types of flow chart there are two types of flow chart there are two types of flow chart okay there are two types of flow chart so the first type is called sequential and the second one is called conditional again i repeat there are two types of flow chart here okay two types of flow chart here the first one is called the sequential and the second one is called a conditional only these two there are so many other things but still now we are going to study only sequential and conditional conditional so now what do you mean by a sequence so sequence means one after the other the task will be happening right so that is called a sequential now coming into this sequential we'll see with an example what is this sequential mean okay so now there is a problem given here for you so suppose i take here all of you take page 119 okay so example 6.1 what is the problem given here can you see construct an appropriate flow chart for depositing a sum of money in an atm using the instructions given below the instructions is given below so you are going to draw the flow chart so what is the first thing they have given under input so what will you do with this uh, card okay with the atm card what will you do first we'll insert the card is it not first so that is what is happening in the input you are going to insert the card so under the process so altogether there are eight process here given for you so first we'll be the process is you are going to select the banking then afterwards what will you do you'll be selecting the language they it will ask either english tamil or any other language after that they will be asking for the atm pin number and here we are going to deposit the money okay so that is what is given in the problem we are going to deposit the money so under that we are going to deposit select cash deposit okay so and the account type is the next selection either it is a savings account or a current account next we will be inserting the cash in the machine right 
and we are confirming the amount that is suppose say I deposit 10,000 so I have to confirm whether I am going to deposit 10,000 or not after that your amount will be credited so credited means it will be added up in in your accounts so that is what you mean by credited and after this process is over finally what will be the output you will be getting a receipt isn't it remember in the machine finally you will be getting a receipt so that would be your output so these are the instructions given using this instructions I am going to draw the flow chart ok so can you see here so I told you there is a start and a stop for every task so I start with using this uh, shape can you see neither it is an oval like ok so now so under input I have a swipe uh, that is a swipe your bank debit card ok so that will be your input so this input or your output will be represented using what symbol a parallelogram symbol so this is using the parallelogram symbol I put an input here as swiping your card so these two symbols has to be connected so this is the flow line you saw isn't it the first symbol so this is the flow line I put a arrow mark like this so the next so there are eight process here so these process are being represented using the shape rectangle can you see here the process is being represented by the rectangle ok so all this process is being done one by one and each and every shape do not forget to connect with the flow line can you see here the flow line the line is being connected here and do not forget to put this arrow mark also so as the, the things go the task go so here can you see so these are all the eight process which is being given finally at the output I told you output is also being represented by the parallelogram so the transaction complete you are receiving the receipt so this is again the parallelogram so these two symbols are used this is an input and this is for your output and again my process is ended and I use this particular oval shape start and end so this is used for your process ok students so this is how I draw a flow chart so this is a particular example for your sequential flow chart sequential means one after the other can you see so after this this after selecting the language I have to put the ATM pin so one by one the process goes on so this particular example is called a sequential flow chart ok students uh, we will continue with this uh, sequential flow chart an example 2 ok so first example hope you all would understood now we will do an example 2 so suppose say I want to add 2 numbers suppose say I want to add 2 numbers 2 plus 3 so I must get the result as 5 so in this case now I am going to represent this particular task or a pro process using a sequential flow chart how do I do ok so as I told you so this 2 and 3 ok so 2 and 3 and uh, addition symbol is there so this becomes your input this becomes your input and this 5 becomes your output this 2 and 3 becomes your input so putting this equal to sign and this addition sign these and all comes under your processing statement ok so now with this uh, problem in mind we will start drawing the flow chart so how do I do here first what I told you so you start with this symbol so I go with this start ok so now I am using the flow line here so I have to give an input for the particular task so what is the input here I am going to input two numbers two and three ok so in the flow chart we will be representing the numbers using the variables so here I take this the value 2 is being stored in the variable a and the 3 is being stored under b and finally this 5 is being stored under the variable c so these are the three variables we are going to use so as I said you so now I am going to input give the input so for input what is the thing I am going to use the parallelogram I am going to use so putting a parallelogram for your input and I am going to put input a comma b so what is the meaning of a comma b so a takes a value 2 and b will be taking the value 3 ok so this is just a representation of your program so now coming to the process so now I have given the 
input. So the next step is we are going to do the process. So the process is being represented using what symbol? Yes, it is using a rectangle. So what is the process here? It is happening. The process here is I am going to add A plus B and the result will be stored in the variable C. So now I write C equal to A plus B. So this is the process. So I am going to add 2 plus 3 and the result 5 will be stored in where? In the variable C. So this is the symbol for your process. So now my process is complete. Now the finally I have to print the output, isn't it? Print the output. So now I put a flow line here. So the output is being represented by a parallelogram like this. Okay. So output 5 I am going to print. So use the statement print. So 5 is in which variable? It is in C, is it not? So that variable I am going to print. So print C, when it sees print C, the result 5 will be shown as. Okay. So now after this I end my task using this particular symbol. So I put end or stop or whatever it is. So now can you understand? So this is again an example for a sequential flow chart. So one below the other the task is being represented. Okay students understood. So now coming to the next one. So the second type is conditional flow chart. So the second type is conditional flow chart. So in this conditional flow chart we will take a small problem. You take page 120. So here a problem is given for you. Construct the flow chart to find whether the given number is a positive integer or negative integer or zero and write step by step process. Again I repeat, construct the flow chart to find whether the given number is a positive integer or negative integer or zero and write the step by step process. Okay. So positive integer means what? It will be obviously greater than zero. Negative integer means what? It is less than zero and this zero is nothing but it is equal to zero. So, so as I said to you it is a conditional flow chart is it not? It is a conditional flow chart. So here what is the condition? We are going to check that whether the given integer is greater than zero, less than zero or equal to zero. Okay. So if the given number is greater than zero then that number becomes your positive integer if the given number is less than 0, that integer becomes a negative integer and if it is 0 means it is simply printed as 0. So since we are using the condition, this particular type of flowchart is called conditional flowchart. Okay. So now we will see how to draw the flowchart using the symbols. So here it is given for you. So we start the task here using this oval shape, start. So my input is any integer, input is any integer. So that integer is, they are representing it using a variable. I told you, you know, we are going to represent any value by a variable. So here input x they have given. So this x is nothing but the number. x is nothing but the number. We are going to find that particular number is either positive, negative or zero. So now these are the flow lines. Don't forget to put this. So the first condition, as I told you, I am going to check whether the given number is greater than 0. So can you see? So for this condition, I am going to put the symbol diamond. I am going to put the symbol diamond symbol I am going to put here. Can you see here? So under this diamond symbol, I am going to put this x here. So x is nothing but the given number. I am going to check whether the given x is greater than 0. So I told you in condition, in condition so whether it is true or false or yes or no. Okay, so here can you see one flow line contains an yes and the other flow line contains a no. So now the condition goes like this, if the given number x is greater than 0, if it is yes means what I must do? I must print x is a positive number, x is a positive number. Coming to the other way around here, I am going to check whether if it is no. In the case it is no means I am going to check whether it is less than 0. So I am going to check again x is less than 0 or not. Again for any uh, condition two things arrive one is yes and the other is no. Okay. So if this x is less than 0 if it is yes means what I must do 
we are going to print that particular number is a negative number. So if all the condition fail, finally I am going to print that x is a 0, x is equal to 0 and finally the process ends. Okay students, now we'll, uh, we will put, uh, I will give you a number, we will solve a number according to this. Okay. So now say for example I take a number, a positive number I will take. So I will take plus 5. So now what we will be doing here, this x, so in this x, this plus 5 will be stored. So when it comes inside, the condition is checked, x is greater than 0, plus 5 is greater than 0. It is true or false? It is true, is it not? So therefore, the flow line will be, is right of this. So here I have the condition yes. So what does there in yes, it will be printing that, plus 5 is a positive number and the process will end. Can you see, after printing, x is a positive number, the loop will come out and the process will be in an ending state. Okay, so now suppose say, if I give another number say minus 5, so now from the start, so we are inputting minus 5 here, so it will come here and the condition will be checked, minus 5 is greater than 0, minus 5 is greater than 0, yes or no, it is no, it is, no. It is no, okay, it is not greater than 0, so it is no, it goes, moves along this condition, no, so here you can see that, we are going to check again. Here we have checked x is greater than 0, is it not? The other way around, we are going to check x is less than 0. In that, what is the input here given? So minus 5, is it not? So minus 5 is less than 0, true or false? Yes, it is true. So under yes, it comes and it will be printing that x is a negative number and the process will end. Okay. If suppose say I give a number say 0, so the condition here is checked, 0 is greater than 0, it is no, it comes here, 0 is less than 0, no again, it comes here to this no and finally it will be printed that the given number x is equal to 0. Can you understand students this example plus 5, minus 5 and 0. So according to the condition, the flow line will be checked for the task, okay. So this is all about your conditional flow chart, okay. So now we uh, will continue students, so I have taught you examples for your conditional flowchart and sequential flowchart, I believe you do understood everything, okay. So other than that, so many examples are given in your textbook, you go through that, okay. And now coming to exercise 6.1, so many problems are there given, so understand the concept carefully and then you can solve the problems. So, one or two problems in the exercise I will solve for you, the remaining things you solve as a homework for you, okay. So now in this mass of following can you see, so what is this line represents, it is a flow line. So what is the answer here, it shows direction of flow, so this would be your answer here, for this it would be the answer. So similarly you can solve for all the symbols, okay. So now coming to the next problem here. Again, I taught you know an ATM card depositing a money. Similarly, for withdrawing the cash using the ATM card, they have given the instructions for you. For this, they have asked to construct a flow chart. Okay. So, seeing that example, you can very well do this particular problem number two. Second problem. Now, coming to the next problem, the third problem here again. So this problem is represented for a recharging mobile phone, you all know, okay, what do you mean by recharging a mobile phone, what are the steps that are going to happen. So here for you, there is a sequence of steps given for you, so again they are asked to find out a sequential flowchart, using a sequential flowchart, you do this particular problem number three, okay. So these uh, problems you kindly do in your max note, okay. Okay, whichever problems you are able to do in your book, you can do the remaining things, please do, don't write here and there, okay. So, rightly do, in, uh, neatly do in your max note, okay. So, now coming to the fourth one, fourth problem here, there is a traffic rule problem given for you. There is a traffic rule problem given for you. You need not draw the flow chart, just you using arrows, they have asked arrows for the flow chart. Arrows means what? The flow line. So for that flow line, you represent, you understand the problem carefully and you attach with the flow lines this particular problem. And now coming to the fifth problem, so here they are checking whether 
the given name is any living thing or a non living thing okay so this also you kindly fill fifth one so now coming to the sixth problem here they have asked for your term 1 and term 2 marks so here they have given a term 1 and term 2 marks the conditions are being given they have asked you to complete the flow chart i believe this would be rather easy for you okay so now coming to this uh, sixth problem second subdivision this i will do for you okay this problem and the last problem in this exercise i will do for you so now coming to the sixth problem second subdivision so what is the problem given here construct the flow chart to print teachers comment as very good if your average mark is above 75 out of 100 if your average mark is 75 out of 100 the teacher should give a comment what as very good or else what the teacher should give still try more the comment must be still try more must be inserted in this particular flow chart so they have given a skeleton of this so how to fill this so here this is a decision box can you see here decision box these two are parallelograms used for uh, your uh, input and your uh, whatever it is input or for output okay and this is your ending process now coming here so what is asked the average mark is given is it not so for this in condition what will you write average so average mark what is the condition is above 75 what is above above means greater than 75 so i am going to check the condition average mark is greater than 75 so i write greater than 75 so since it is a decision box i told you one will be yes and the other one will be no so anything either this i put yes or this also i can put okay so one is yes means the other would be no so now so if it is true yes means it's true true means what the teacher should give a command very good so here i have to write what print if it is yes means you have to print very good okay and if the condition is no what is the thing the command has to be given still try more so i have to write here print still try more can you understand so after this the process comes to an end end or a stop can you see how this problem has been solved okay so now coming to this this since this is our print statement this represents a output statement so this is a decision box and this is your end of your task okay students so now coming to the last problem the seventh one so what is given a merchant calculates the cost price cost price is represented as cp so you have all learned in your max class right what is cp sp and all and the selling price sp of the product bought by him so we are going to construct the flow chart to print profit if the selling price sp is more than the cost price so profit you know isn't it so when the selling price is greater than more than means it is greater than cp that is selling price is greater than so if the selling price is greater than cp selling price is greater than the cost price what is the condition we are going to print it as profit if the condition is uh, false we are going to print as loss okay so shall we draw the flow chart for this particular problem okay so now shall we draw so now we'll start drawing so as i draw you also draw okay so i start the task so now i use a flow line so what will be the input here i am going to input what the selling price and the cost price will be your input so for the input you will be using the parallelogram symbol so i must put input cp and sp cp is nothing but cost price and sp is nothing but your selling price so the next so this is uh, we are going to check the condition right so therefore we are going to use a diamond shape a decision box so what is the condition so if the selling price is greater than if the selling price is greater than the cost price okay so we have uh, two things right one is yes the other is no 
So when the statement is true, when the selling price is greater than cost price, what I must print? I must print profit. I must print as profit. So for printing, I use another parallelogram like this. So print profit. Okay. So now, if the condition is false, that is no, don't forget to put this arrow marks, students, okay. So if the condition fails, we have to print what? We have to print it as loss, okay. So now the process comes to an end, so therefore I am going to put an end to the process. So therefore, I end the process with this oval shape like this. So again I repeat here, so when the condition is selling price is greater than CP, if it is yes means I am going to print as profit, if it is no means it is loss. Now can you identify under which type it comes? Yes. So this con comes under your conditional flow chart. This particular problem comes under your conditional flow chart because we are checking some condition, is it not? Hope you would understood all the problem students. Okay, thank you.